Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sons of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at a couple of quick tips to make sure your viewing experience is as good as it can be. So on screen we've got the typical startup screen of Blender, and we've got our cube in the middle, and we've got our light, I'm going to delete that, and our camera, I'm going to delete that. And this is what your viewport settings will look like as standard. And it's a little bit annoying, personally, I don't like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to move this shape around or make it a little bit different to demonstrate a couple of points. So I'm just going to come into that and scale it on the y-axis. I'm going to control and A to apply the scale and I'm going to go into face mode and let's just G and Y that across two. And let's make the edges a little bit more interesting there and there. Make them nice and rounded and we'll do the same for that one and that one. Okay, so we've got a slightly more interesting object and we're going to cut a shape out of this to demonstrate a problem. So I'm going to use box cutter for this. I'm going to go into side view, alt W. If you don't have box cutter, it's fine. You could be doing this with whatever. Um, I'm just going to use an engon cutter and I'm just going to do something like that. And we're going partially the way through. So this should demonstrate this point quite nicely. So again, this is all the standard viewport displays. I'm just gonna press W to get rid of box cutter. And this looks fine from this angle, but as soon as we go over here, you start losing all the detail on the undercut here. And that's a real pain in this standard viewport display. Now, first of all, I generally prefer matte cap and I prefer the red, but you've still got this problem. I just prefer this because I think it's nicer to look at for a long period of time uh, it seems to give me less eye strain but until I look underneath I can't really see the detail here and that makes it really annoying especially if I wanted to add some extra details here and I come into side view and you can't even see it so a couple of ways to make this nicer the first thing is I generally always turn on cavity and you'll see that makes this more extreme line on those edges and if you come to where it says cavity you've got the ridge and you can put that to make it really bright and you can do the same with the valleys I'm just actually going to put that back to approximately one and I'll come down here and you'll see what it looks like so here if I change the valleys that's going to increase the darkness of the concave edges so again very nice but it doesn't solve this problem and it doesn't solve this problem now a lot of people go about this by putting on shadow and that does work you can see it it's not particularly clear, but it works. But I do find that shadow, if you use it, it just darkens everything a little bit. Obviously, that's what we want here, but there is a better option in Blender. So I'm going to turn that off. Obviously, if you like shadow, feel free to use it. I'm going to come to side view and we're going to have a look at this. So as well as having this cavity option, it's got a types button. And at the moment, it's automatically set to screen. Now, if you change that to both, this will show you what's going on here. You can see even in side view and at an angle, these different details. It's not as dark as using shadow and you gain an option. We were fiddling around with a screen space there, but you gain an option for the world space as well. And for example, if I come into the ridge again, you'll notice that what this has done, and let's just compare this to where I've just got screen. Here you get a very bright line just on the edge or the ridge whereas if I go into both you get a slight transition coming off of it and that's what allows you to see the difference and again if I start upping this this makes this transition or almost like a glow on the edge I always think of it be more extreme and you can do the same with the valley and make that darker and all those options are here, and it depends what you like. I mean, personal preference is entirely up to you. I actually generally have these a little bit lower. I think I normally have the valley at somewhere around two. And I think I have the ridge up to about 2.5. So I have something like this. But you'll see that this makes it much easier to do things. For example, now I can see this detailing here. And if I want to add something in, for example, if I want to add in another box cut, and I maybe just want that here, I can actually see this so I can make that judgment and we can add those extra details into our object from side on view. And especially if you're using box cutter, side view is so essential to make sure that you're getting things as accurate as possible. It's really useful to have these cavity settings. And just for clarity, you can do this even with studio lighting. So studio lighting still has these cavity options. You don't have to be using matte cap for this. It's just something I slightly prefer. And if there's something you really need to accentuate, do always remember you've got the option of coming to the overlays and adding on the wireframes. 
which means you start getting this blacker line and that again adds a little bit more clarity that you might find useful though if you've got a particularly complex object this might actually prove to be a little bit more of a mess especially if you've got something like a subdivision surface on.